Every one of my syllabi has a little section with this title in bold italicized print. And it's the part that students often go to first. How will I be graded? It includes all the assignments, all the things you have to do, what percentage contributes to each part of the final grade, and then the grading scale shows how that final score corresponds to a final grade. You do things in this way, and you'll get an A, or a B, or so forth. When we think about coming to God, that's often how we think about it. We often think in terms of performance, earning a grade. If I can just do these things and do them well enough, and I, if I can avoid these other things, and if I can think these thoughts and perform in these ways, then I will find God, and I will be acceptable to God. But there's another way of thinking about coming to God. In Romans 5, Paul talks about how the death of Christ has brought justification and life to all people. And he speaks as if it's already been done. As if the A has already been achieved. And your task is to see it. To open your eyes to that reality. To embrace it. To say yes to it. And to live into that reality in your life. You are already God's beloved daughters and sons. President Greer ended his sermon by pointing us to the words of Ephesians 4. Make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. It's hard to do that when you're driven by the need to perform. Because in that kind of a system, it's easy for everyone else to become a threat. But we, when we embrace God's welcome already given, then no one else is a threat. We all got in the same way. We don't have to protect or prove anything. As a dear friend of mine used to say, there is nothing that you can ever do that will make God love you more than God already has. And there is nothing that you will ever do that could make God love you less than God already has. Because God's love is a gift that doesn't depend on your performance. And living into that reality is why we gather at this table. This is a moment for us to open our eyes and our hearts to the truth of God's love and grace. In his book, Spiritual Direction, Henry Nouwen writes these words that I pray will be written on your hearts as you come to the table. Listen to that voice with great inner attentiveness. Hear at your center words of God that say, I have called you by name from the very beginning. You are mine and I am yours. You are my beloved. On you my favor rests. I have molded you in the depths of the earth and knitted you together in your mother's womb. I have carved you on the palms of my hands and hidden you in the shadow of my embrace. I look at you with an infinite tenderness and care, more intimate than that of a mother for her child. I have counted every hair on your head and guided you at every step. Wherever you go, I go with you. And wherever you rest, I keep watch. I will give you food that will satisfy all your hunger and drink that will quench all your thirst. I will not hide my face from you. You know me as your own, and I know you as my own. You belong to me. Wherever you are, I will be. Nothing will ever separate us. You are my beloved. Amen. And now I invite you to take a piece of bread and hold it in your hands as I say the words of institution. On the night that he was betrayed, Jesus took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this to remember me. Let's all take it in together.
And now I invite you to take the cup. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup. And he said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it to remember me. Let's all drink it. Whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Let's pray. Loving God, we thank you for gathering us into this community and to this table. You have loved us beyond what we could have ever hoped for. You have united us with Christ and each other. And in bread and wine, you have spoken to us these words. You are my beloved. May that word be written deeply on our hearts, and may your grace flow outward through us in the ways we treat each other and your beautiful creation. And now send us out in the power of your spirit to live and work, that all might know your love, and that your kingdom might come to earth as it is in heaven. We ask this in the name of Christ our Lord. Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings.